Most of these videos are kind of about me because I fit test masks on me. But fit testing is individual, as is mask fit. So if you want to know how your mask fits, unless your face is identical to mine, and I hope it's not, you'll need a fit test of your own. But it can be expensive to buy commercial kits that cost $180 or more, or expensive to try to find a fit testing company in your area that will do individuals. Now there is a fit testing solution for home available at a reasonable cost, and that is the Fit Tests for All Home Fit Test Kit. This kit contains everything you need to do the exact same style of test done for industry, an OSHA compliant test. It's not approved by OSHA yet, but it is the same style and it includes everything on one simple package. Fundamentally, this type of fit test is really simple. We take a challenge agent that you can taste, we aerosolize it into tiny particles that are too big to get inside of a mask through the filter, and then we wave it around you. If you can taste it, that means it got inside your mask by going around the seal. And that's it, at least in concept. But there are a few extra steps we have to take to make sure that we really get the best effect from this test. Okay, I have unpacked the contents of the fit test kit. Let's see what you get. First off, you got a user guide. There's a QR code to the instructions online. There is a form or a set of forms for you to fill out if you want to keep track of your fit test results. Next up, this is the sensitivity solution. This is the solution we use to test if you can taste Bittrex at all. It's diluted and we'll use different amounts to see how much of it it takes for you to taste it. Next, fit test solution. This is the concentrated solution we use when you're wearing your mask and uh, you can taste if it gets inside your mask. Now here is the uh, nebulizer, a little nano mister that has a reservoir that we can fill up with one of these solutions, whichever test we're doing. We have some cotton swabs here. These are to gently clean this little ultrasonic nozzle here. That's really important. Uh, I have some different fit test solution here. This is saccharin fit test solution. Uh, you might be able to see that there are crystals in this plastic bag. Uh, because some of this fit test solution leaked out and it dried out and it left behind lots and lots of little crystals. And those crystals um, can clog these little nozzles. So you need to run some distilled water through this, maybe clean it with the swabs to keep it going. And uh, we also have some chocolate candies. These are to use in between sensitivity solution and the fit test. You'll want about 15 minutes in between the two to help get that taste out of your mouth. Uh, you'll also want to wash off your face and your hands. You need to not be tasting any fit test solution when you put your mask on, because if you are still tasting fit test solution, you won't be able to notice if any more gets inside your mask. So that's really important. That uh, means that the fit test can take a little longer than you uh, might think, not because you're doing anything, but because you need some time in between the stages. Now, looking at this little nano mister reservoir, um, Philip says to use this um, like this when you're storing it so that you will not get leaks. Um, these are not perfect when they're upright. Uh, it, that's okay when you're trying to get them to uh, put out some mist here. That's fine, but it, they can leak. And this is a, a very narrow opening here. You don't want to risk spilling any of this because it's expensive. So uh, I would suggest getting a, um, an eyedropper or a pipette or a funnel so that you can fill it up without risking spilling any of it. Now, for this demo, I'm just going to use some water because I don't want to get a uh, fit test solution all over everything that I am recording the video with. Now, before we go any further, remember that this is a challenge agent that you can taste. And that means that every time we do the test, whether it's the sensitivity solution or the fit test, you need to be breathing through your mouth. Otherwise, you won't be able to taste it. Uh, so that is a critical point. Now, let's take a look at how to use this enclosure. The enclosure is to keep the aerosols roughly contained. It doesn't need to fit you perfectly, but it helps keep them uh, sort of an even amount an even concentration, and it also keeps the uh, aerosol from getting over too much of your stuff. Because um, you don't really want the bitter stuff on all of your surfaces and uh, who knows where. So you might want to test this in a bathroom or someplace where you have uh, fewer porous surfaces for this to get on. One other thing to note, 
uh, Philip has instructions saying specifically not to put the nozzle right here. Uh, he wants you to hold the nozzle a little bit away and to use half second bursts for the sensitivity test. We are going to do uh, one half second burst. And you notice that the uh, burst missed that little opening because of the air conditioning airflow. So holding it away from that opening is problematic sometimes depending on the airflow. Uh, you might actually have to go closer to make sure it gets in. We're gonna do a series of potentially three bursts. We'll just do half second burst, wait 10 seconds, uh, and then we'll do another half second burst, wait 10 seconds, see if you can taste it, and another half uh, second burst, and see if you can taste it. Now, because there's not a whole lot of a room in here, um, Philip has instructions saying to lean your head away from the opening so that the nano mist can go into the void of the enclosure and get a more even distribution. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try and see how that works. Now that you've done the threshold check, this is where the magic happens. How many of these sprays did it take for you to detect the bitrex? One, two, three, or did you not detect it? If you didn't detect it, you're gonna to have to use a different method for fit testing. This method won't work for you. We'll talk about those methods in another video. Now, if you did detect it, how many sprays did it take? One, two, or three? Remember that number because we are gonna use that in the exercises with your mask on. We're gonna have you put your mask on and we're gonna do seven exercises to simulate everyday tasks you might wanna do during the day and get an idea of whether this mask fits you well uh, under actual simulated working conditions. Um, we don't wanna just test it under perfect conditions because that's not how you wear masks. And those seven exercises are gonna be normal breathing, deep breathing, side to side, up and down, bending over, and then normal breathing again. Uh, you can also do jo jogging on the second to last exercise. And I, I did cheat, I have them written down over there. They're also written down in the instructions. And when we do that, each exercise will be 60 seconds long. And at the beginning of those exercises, you will use the same number of sprays that you took to detect this. And then we'll repeat that number of sprays in 30 seconds. So we'll do it twice during each exercise. And uh, that is the magic. And you're wondering, like, why, why is that magic? That is calibrated. So we established your baseline to detect Bitrex. And then the scientists at 3M who developed the system have tested this concentration, this higher concentration, so that it equates to a relative amount of a threshold for 1% leakage compared to using particle talent testing. And this is a calibrated method that accounts for people's variable senses of taste. And this way you'll know that you're detecting a leak of 1% or greater. We actually don't want to detect leaks that are really, really small because every respirator leaks a little bit. We don't want you to fail every mask. We want you to find one that fits you well, that's within the allowable tolerances. Now, some people are super tasters and they're very sensitive to Bitrex and they may falsely fail some masks that would pass uh, a machine test. Um, that's not as common, but it does still happen. And if you have a really hard time finding masks that fit, that could be an issue. And you might wanna see about getting a port account test, which is objective and uh, you won't be fooled by your sensitivity to Bitrex. Before you go on to the mask fit test, you're gonna to want to wash your face off rinse out your mouth with water, and uh, maybe have uh, some chocolate not included, uh, or the ones that are included, to help get that Bitrex taste out of your mouth. Be sure to um, pour this sensitivity solution back in the original bottle to preserve it, and then put in fit test solution. You do need to use the more concentrated solution. That is the key to the two-stage test. Now, since I'm just using water, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I also have a stopwatch. I'm just going to set this timer running so that I will know when to change exercises and when to do the sprays. I'm just going to use uh, as a reference, I'm going to say that I, my threshold was uh, one spray. So I'm going to do that every 30 seconds 
and I'm going to change exercises every 60 seconds. Before beginning your exercise with the mask you're testing, be sure that you have it um, properly donned. And one of the keys to doing that is making sure the nose wire fits you properly. If you've got a bifold mask, a KN95, I don't have one here in front of me, um, but they often come like this with a really sharply folded nose wire and it's got a little crease in it. Be sure to open that up and flatten it down because if you don't, you can get a little triangle above your nose that lets air in. So flatten it down before putting the mask on. Uh, 3M says to use two hands to do this. You want to conform the nose wire to your nose for the best fit. Make sure it's tucked under your chin. Uh, this feels like it's fitting me pretty well, so we're going to give this a try. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put on some glasses here just because I don't like spraying myself in the eye with anything, including Bitrex. Not generally considered a problem uh, with fit testing, but I'm still just going to put these on. And be sure to keep your mouth open and breathe through your mouth. And that's it. That is the full OSHA fit test protocol. Uh, Philip warns that if you don't want to taste Bitrex after the fit test, you might want to vent the room out a little bit before you take your mask off. Some people uh, take their masks off um, immediately while they're still in the enclosure so they can actually taste the difference and, and understand viscerally how much the mask was protecting them. If you taste any of the Bitrex in any of the uh, exercises, the test stops. It's aborted and you're done and the test was failed. That mask did not fit you. So now having tried this fit test, sort of, since I cheated with water, um, I will say that this does take a lot of time. If you really want to know if your mask fits well, this is the best way to do it if you're going to do a qualitative test. Um, if you want to simplify it, please still do the two stages. Uh, use the threshold test and then use the um, same number of sprays and do an exercise. You might just do one fit test exercise uh, and that could give you a good enough idea. And for me, the exercise that I really want to know about is talking because that jaw motion can upset the mask. And that's what I do when I'm wearing a mask. Uh, you know, I talk to people, you know, whether you're talking with coworkers or if you're a service worker, you're talking to customers um, or patients, whatever that is, talking exercise is one that I think is really important. So you can simplify this if you don't have time to do them all. It's not as good, but it's still very good. But uh, please don't skip the sensitivity solution test. That is really the, the magic that makes this run. Now, I did notice a few things when I was using this hood. One, maybe don't wear a hat with a brim like I was. That, that kind of threw things off. Also, don't wear a hat with a brim if you don't want to get Bitrex in it. Fortunately, I was not using Bitrex, but um, you know this isn't machine washable, so that was a mistake. Um, uh, maybe maybe don't do that. <laughs> and uh, maybe wear some clothes that you don't mind uh, throwing into the wash after you're done. But overall, good value. Now, in an upcoming video, we'll compare this fit test to a commercial fit test and see how they are different. So with that, I hope you find this useful and uh, hope that you'll find a way to get a fit test. And also, we will look into lower cost versions, more do-it-yourself in a later video.